back this holiday season, but I just don't know what to do. Let's find ways to give back because education today starts now! Welcome to Education Today. I'm Aaron Shanner of Fort City High School in the Armstrong School District. Today we are going to talk about a truly unique program that is run right here in Armstrong County. The holidays can be stressful for everyone. Armstrong County Memorial Hospital wants to help alleviate some of the holiday worry experienced by their patients and local residents. Each year the hospital adopts numerous families with the guidance from Community Action in Armstrong County and assists them with their holiday shopping today we are here with two registered nurses who help to lead the project and both work in the Richard G. Lobby Cancer Center. Welcome to Education Today. Please tell us about yourself, your job, and the Cancer Center where you work. Well, thank you for having us both. Um, my name is Dana Klingensmith. Um, I'll introduce myself first. And I've worked at ACMH Hospital for 23 years now. I've been in the Cancer Center for over 10, and I'm currently in charge of clinical trials and taking care of patients with cancer and their families. And I'll hand it off to my friend. My name is Carrie Chavira, and I work at ACMH Hospital for about two years now. And I work in the Cancer Center with all the breast cancer patients and help them to um, get through all of their treatments, understand their diagnosis, um, and um, you know, help them along the way if there's anything that they need as far as transportation, help with their co-pays, things like that. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Can you please explain your special project that you initiate every year from the Cancer Center at Christmas time? Sure. Um, the Cancer Center actually acts as kind of the hub and the, the main point of focus um, for our entire project. Um, we obtain a list of families and we can talk about that later but what we do is um, we get this shopping list and everyone in the Cancer Center participates. We also um, open it up to the rest of the hospital and I know the operating room and pharmacy and other departments also adopt families but we again in the Cancer Center we're the main focus the main area um, all of the presents are wrapped and brought to the Cancer Center and everything's distributed that way um, I don't know do you have anything else to add on that no I don't think so sounds like a wonderful program how did this important project originate? You know, we were talking about that and I've been in the Cancer Center again over 10 years and I'm not 100% certain what year this originated. Um, I believe it started with one of our former employees. Um, her name was Judy Walter. She's retired um, now from ACMH. But she's very passionate about giving back to the community and helping um, local friends, family members, and I believe that she was the originator of the project. I'm going to say it's probably been at least eight years, and um, it's definitely um, grown, it's grown, yes, over yeah. the years. And um, and now the whole hospital is involved. Right. So. Right. We started, you know, with just a main focus again in the cancer center, and now since we did, she actually did originate the project. Then, you know, we continue to kind of serve again as the hub and the main uh, focus where everything initiates from. Oh. All right. Where do you get your adopted Christmas families from? Well, we get the names from the local community action. They will send us a list of, um, and it's very private. There are no names. There are no. Um, we basically just get um, the sex of the individuals in the family and their ages, and then we get a list of the uh, sizes of clothing that they wear and the items that might be on their wish lists. And that those lists originate from community action. That they, they come to us, and then we distribute them to the other departments in the hospital, so that every department gets a family right. for Christmas. Community action is the area. They're the ones that determine the eligibility for the. Um, potential you know Christmas list and I think that there are other um, 
probably um, businesses and what you know that work with them as well. Um, but I do know that we take a, a large number um, of the families. Sounds pretty busy too. Very much so. How do you determine your shopping list for your Christmas families? Well, as I said before, we get a list from Community Action, and they have the the members of the family listed um, very generically on the list, with along with their ages and any sizes that um, any any needs the family might have. If a child needs a pair of boots or if they need a coat, and um, anything that they may um, you know really want for Christmas that year, and then um, we determine from there, um, you know, who's going to buy what and um, kind of distribute it that way. We will now take a close look at other organizations in the area that also help give back to others in need. Hi, I'm Charlie Hassa and I'm here with Gloria Carney from the Salvation Army. So, what is the Salvation Army? Um, well, actually, the Salvation Army is comprised of two separate entities. One, it's a worship center, first of all, because we are based on God. We are a Christian organization. And our second entity is that we are a social service foundation. Um, we try to combine the both, the both uh, programs together, the clients that we um, assist on a daily basis with food, shelter, uh, basic living needs and so forth. We, we try to also implement uh, Christianity into their life along with uh, providing them with their basic needs. Why is the Salvation Army such a great place to work? Well, the Salvation Army um, to me is an excellent place to work because on a daily basis um, I have the ability to improve somebody's life. Um, every day I get up, I don't always want to get up and come to work, but once I'm here, it, it's an awesome place to work because I can um, help people um, attain a better standard of living. Um, we keep families together. Um, we get people jobs. We clothe people. We shelter people. And we feed people. And it, it's awesome to know that we not only help people, but we really, really help them to live. What do you do for the Salvation Army? Um, my job title here is I'm the director of the program called Bridging the Gap. And what the Bridging the Gap program is, it's a program that is set up for first time juvenile offenders and it's a second chance program. What we do is it's a 12 week course where uh, once a, a, a juvenile has broken the law, we bring them in, into our core um, via the court system. And uh, it's like a second chance. Like they, it's a 12 week, very intense program where we review life skills, living skills, social skills. And if they successfully complete the program by following all the rules and um, aspects that we ask of them, their court record is expunged along with the court costs that they accumulated with their offense. What does the Salvation Army do for people in need during the holidays? Um, well, Christmas time especially is um, the time of year the Salvation Army um, really, really assists the community. You see our, our kettle workers ringing the bell. Um, that is one way that we assist with the community. The money that's received from those kettles, we um, we purchase Christmas presents for children and uh, food for those less fortunate um, or basically anybody that, that needs it. You don't have to be um, dirt poor to receive food or presents from us. Anybody that inquires is, is eligible to receive. It's just a, an awesome time of year. It's when the, Sal the Salvation Army really um, is known in the community with again with the kettle season, um, with the presents for the kids, um, many organizations at this time of year, uh, such as other churches, the YMCA, um, district attorney's offices, schools, um, 
Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, everybody joins as one in order to assist the Salvation Army with trying to provide these presents and food for people. Why do you think the Salvation Army continues to thrive? Um, I personally know that the Salvation Army continues to strive because of the people within the community. And just not the community in Armstrong County or Gatanning or Ford City, but communities all, all around the world. The Salvation Army is a, is a strong social service because wherever there's a Salvation Army, there's a strong community. And within those communities are people who, who love to give and love to support their communities. It's, it's a funny thing. Um, within the Salvation Army, I get to see uh, some people all year round. And sometimes the, the, the people that I see are not the friendliest people January through November. But December comes and these people just come alive and, and they help assist and, with us giving and they're out there ringing bells and they're, they're in here volunteering, wrapping presents or picking up food. It's just, it's just awesome how a community comes together to support one cause. Well, that's really great. Thank you so much for being here today. Well, thank you for having me. God bless. Okay, now we are going to take a look into another organization that helps give back to the community as well. What is Adopt-A-Family? Adopt-A-Family is where Fort City's National Honor Society helps underprivileged families during the holiday season. How many families did you adopt this holiday season? Well, we actually raised enough money this year to adopt two families, and in previous years we only adopted one, so we're making progress. And How do you pick the families you adopt? We actually don't pick the family for adopt a family. The guidance counselor finds us the underprivileged families and then lets us know how many people are in the family, what they their what necessities they need for the holiday season, and then we take the money we raised and go and buy everything that they need and wrap it all up and then surprise them with it. How did you raise the money to adopt these families? To help pay for the adoptive family, we did two fundraisers. We did a fundraiser at McDonald's to help uh, raise money and we also did a fundraiser for the Steeler Raffle, which they all raised up to $800. What was your own personal contribution to adopt a family? Uh, my personal contribution to the adoptive family is that I went shopping for adoptive family with others in NHS and we just bought things that the family needed, all their necessities and things that they were interested in. How many years have you been doing adoptive family? At Ford City, adoptive family has been a long-standing tradition in a NHS and we hope to keep it around for a very long time. <laughs> We're going to take a short break and then come back to learn more about the Adopt-A-Family project the staff at Armstrong County Memorial Hospital conducts every year during Christmas time. Stick around. Before I came to IUP, I had no idea what college would be like or what role I would play or where I'd be in the future. But when I came to IUP, everything changed. I met people who really made me feel like I belonged. I had great classes at a great nationally ranked university. Hi, my name is Megan Miller. I'm a fine arts major and this is my university. We are back with Armstrong School District's education today. Today we are talking with members of ACMH Hospital about their Adopt-A-Family project. We are here with Dana Klingensmith and Carrie Shavera, both nurses in the Richard G. Lobby Cancer Center at Armstrong County Memorial Hospital. They will give us further insight into this special project the hospital conducts every year during Christmas time. This project helps families in need and gives a chance for the hospital employees to help give back to our community. It must be, must be difficult working in the cancer center. 
How does this special project each year change the atmosphere of your work environment? In the Cancer Center, I know when you hear just the word cancer, you know, people often think of sadness, um, but we try to constantly um, promote um, focusing on not so much the quantity of our life because none of us know how long we're going to live, but we like to focus more on quality of life. So we, we do try to keep always an uplifting atmosphere. Um, but honestly, um, Christmas time is always a very joyous time for lots of people. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our patients and families and everyone enjoys seeing the presents come in and the toys that we receive. Um, and it's just, it, it does even add, um, it's kind of a bonus, you know, to the, to the atmosphere that we're trying to create there. Have you ever adopted any of the Cancer Center patients as part of your Christmas families? Yes, we have. Yeah, Most of the time we get the families from Community mm -hmm. Action, but if we know of a, a special family that, um, you know, might be going through a hard time, then um, we will, you know, um, with their permission, ask them if it's okay if we adopt them for Christmas. Um, last year I had a very special patient that I was um, working with on a clinical trial and he was a young man. Um, he had a type of a brain cancer. He had two small children and we knew and he knew that he would not have um, a long life and we wanted to make his Christmas extra special for him and his family so we adopted their family last year and um, he, he died shortly after Christmas and they couldn't say enough about um, the bonus and the added gifts um, that we were able to provide for them and this year, um, because you know we could help them out in their time of need, that his family um, had a little fundraiser and they brought in um, a check that they gave to us and they thanked us for helping them and they wanted to um, give the money so that we could put it for another um, patient or someone in need uh, at Christmas time this year because we were able to help them last year. So you know, the spirit kind of moves from year to year and um, it was very, it was very touching and they were very close to us. So we were very thankful that we could do that for their family and give them those moments that we knew um, probably would be their last Christmas together. So um, it, was, it was very nice. It's an amazing story. Does the employees do all the purchasing of the gifts or do you get help from anyone else? We do get some help from the local Toys for Tots mm -hmm. and we will get a shipment from them and we have a conference room that will be full of toys that are donated by Toys for Tots but our employees also um, buy additional items so that we can, we try to, you know, complete the lists and try to get everything that's, mm -hmm. that's listed and um, so we do work with Toys for Tots but the employees do um, help as well. Yeah, the employees by a large quantity and I also send a letter a letter out um, at the each year at the beginning of the project um, to the physicians and anyone else in the hospital and some of our doctors have been very generous and give a nice um, do, um, monetary donation each year so that you know if there's something extra special on the list that maybe the employees weren't able to obtain or that we couldn't get through a donation we have added money that we you know from the doctors that we can um, you know, add this in with the gift. Um, we also, sometimes with this money, we will buy them um, a gift certificate to a local grocery store so that they not only have all of the gifts on their wish list, but they also can um, go to the store and shop and make sure that they have all of the food and items that they need for their Christmas holiday. Okay. Does your cancer center do any other outreach projects? We do. We have several outreach projects that we do um, around the year. We have several cancer screenings. We do a head and neck cancer screening, a skin cancer screening in the spring um, around Mother's Day. And then we recently in the fall just started to do a breast cancer screening. It's called our Girls' Day Out. Um, we sort of have a, um, a spa day. Um, we'll have massage therapists come and um, vendors from the community that are coming and selling things and we promote that as shopping and we have um, 
the Purple Pinky is a big supporter of us. They will come down and do um, manicures, and um, it's all to promote breast cancer screening and awareness. And um, we also do um, free or low-cost mammograms that day for people who qualify. Um, am I missing anything? Um, we. We like to promote prevention mm -hmm. um, as the number one for, for any type of cancer. And I go to, um, and Carrie has been with me at, at different times, to the high schools, um, sometimes the um, middle schools and junior highs, but usually um, they have a health fair and around either prom time or Christmas time, we like to um, encourage the girls and boys um, not to um, to consider alternative methods of tanning. Um, again, prevention. Um, we like to prevent or promote spray tans and things like that. We also talk about um, smoking, chewing, you know, issues that you commonly see with with in the younger population. Again, you know, prevention being a number one um, issue with all of our screenings. Well, the activities you do with the breast cancer patients, that sounds like a good time. Yeah, it's very rewarding. Yeah, I bet. Can you describe the feeling that doing such an important project brings to you and the employees at the ACMH Hospital? We were talking about this earlier, mm -hmm. and I think that um, our jobs are very unique in that, um, actually, I wouldn't even call them jobs. I would call them more life's work. It's not just a job. Right. And there, it, it's very rewarding what we do every day anyway, um, and you get to go home every day. Some, some days you feel like you didn't do anything and you'll get that patient at the end of the day that gives you a big hug and tells you thank you. And you might feel like you did absolutely nothing, but just sitting there with them and listening for an extra five minutes, you know, means the world to them. So I think that this only adds to, um, I think it's a blessing what we get to do every day. And um, it's a blessing to get to work in a um, environment where um, everybody's so caring and so passionate about the people in the community. And um, the, the Christmas projects and our outreach projects only add to it because right. it really brings everybody together. together. And a lot of times people will say, I don't know how you work in the cancer center. Why do you want to work in the cancer center? Working with cancer patients is um, very rewarding and I have learned um, so many things from the patients that I've taken care of over the years and it, mainly they've taught us all you know how to to celebrate life and to um, be thankful every day is a gift and they don't see their diagnosis oftentimes as um, you know why me um, poor me they are they again they are given the gift to be able to look at life from a different perspective and they give that gift to us and again we see every day as a gift sounds like an amazing job really does. We are out of time for tonight. We would like to thank Dana Klingesmith and Carrie Shavira for taking the time today to join us and reminding us all that we must keep the true spirit of Christmas alive in our minds and hearts. Our thanks also goes to the TV production students of Fort City High School, led by their teacher, Miss Bobby Hamill. They were our film crew for today. They also took on the challenge of piecing tonight's script together, finding guests, and that formulating this year's twist on what has become a staple of Education Today schedule each year. As always, copies of this and all Education Today programming may be requested by contacting G Chris Garitano, ASD's multimedia technician. Please join us again next week for another look at the Armstrong School District. Visit our website for updated information about the district and have a great holiday season.